All right, guys. Do I look familiar? Well, I should because I'm doing back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back episodes, one right after another. Chick Flick Teal Pointer is trying to go on strike here because I am overworking Chick Flick Teal Pointer. Anyway, you literally saw this guitar a few seconds ago. It seemed like a week because that's how often I release my episodes, but you saw this one in the cheap way to clean up a junky grimy arch top episode which I will give you that right up there right about now how you like that cross-handed work oh I have to show you something I want you to practice this okay nobody can do this except me so practice take your hands put them on your lap and then cross over and do this you see this pretty simple hands up clap down down around and then get faster at it can you believe that don't make me show you my nunchuck skills too anyway when we were working on this guitar something happens fairly frequently when you go to look at these arch tops you know i have given you a plethora of information on these econo arch tops ranging from the christmas episode to understanding how cheaply they're made to maybe buyer's guide to junk arch tops there's a playlist up there right about now because here's the deal most of the time when you run across these the strings are off of this one but the action is like this high and people will say good for slide playing good you know what you're gonna buy one and then unless you've got your own equipment to do neck resets. Do, do you know that I showed you how to make a neck puller and how to steam off? I'm burning through these cards, but that's right up there right about now. But anyway, you get a hold of one of these guitars and the strings are way up off the deck at the 12th fret. Now, sometimes that means there's a neck reset necessary. And you can usually tell that if the neck is separating from the body right here. But in the case of this guitar, which, this started off as a student instrument. It was made in 1950, by the way. It has a V-neck. Um, all that information was in the episode where we cleaned it up. It looks real nice compared to what it started off as. But, if you look here, you can see that that fretboard is actually separating. Now, does that mean it needs a neck reset? Maybe not. You're actually looking for this condition to be what's wrong than a neck reset. Because what's happening right here is the back is loose from the body. So let's get to the bench and we're going to use another instrument that I picked up somewhere to display it. I think this is, it's old, I think it's a mandolin, but I need to find out because, oh boy, I would hate to be labeled as a liar but we're gonna look at this thing on the bench look at how the strings I can stick my fingers under there we're gonna look at these two whatever this is and the guitar and put another little bit of knowledge in your guitar buying arsenal people use that word it's like plethora uh, a paradigm those are anyway let's quit talking let's get to the bench here we are this is the stumac guitar workstation love it it you can spin everything around it adjusts it locks in you can tighten everything up um, all your tools can be right here but we're going to kind of get the camera where we're focused on this part right here now let me try to zoom this in and get everything right. So, when I've talked to you about junk arch tops, it's good to have some tools with you. When you look at people's guitars that you're going to buy, always get permission. Don't start prying around. But we all know sometimes you can fit a palette knife in between here. That's not a good sign. You can see marks of glue, you can see all that. And when necks cut loose, everything is like a pivot point, like a teeter-totter. 
wherever there's this over here there's the opposite there if you're dealing with trees and wood we all know that when trees grow if they bend this way there's compression on the side over here there's tension here things get tighter things get compressed simple rules of a teeter-totter if one kid jumps off the other kid falls to the ground if the kids aren't the same way always look at life like a teeter-totter now it's coming from somebody who has a dirty shirt anyway what's happened here is when I got a hold of this guitar the strings were on it so if the strings were on it it's pulling pressure this way which is making this squat down if this goes up this has to go down and what was happening what was hiding was let's spin this around you can see right here that this is moving do you see that right here so if this is under tension it would actually pull this up into this and you wouldn't be able to tell that this whole back piece is loose now think about this if you're talking about string action and you can watch this whole thing move that much that is quite a bit when it comes to what your string action is at the 12th fret this is kind of manifest here in a couple of different ways loosen the strings off a little bit and see if this gap changes if there is a gap there's not a gap here if it doesn't do that and it starts to show wood here that means everything here is cutting loose inside of here when you do that if one side is sticking out more than the other not only is it coming undone but it's twisting as well remember where there's this there's that I don't want to go kung fu theater and yin yang and all that kind of stuff but this is really pretty simple stuff now I got this old thing I don't know where but just for this do you see how high the strings are you think that the neck is breaking loose well look it doesn't appear that there is that much of a gap if any here but what's really happening is everything here is coming apart which is allowing this to bend in and if this comes up so does the string action this is a very severe example of what I'm talking about now I can throw this in the fireplace and keep warm and ruin or fix the carbon footprint I still don't get all of that so what do you do with this well it's pretty simple I take hide glue I have a hide glue bottle around here so I can show you it doesn't come like this okay there it is right there hide glue maybe we should zoom back out the other zoom out there we go hide glue now I take a hide glue heater whatever kind of heater bottle heater wax pot put a little bit of water in here a little bit not a ton this is an electrical scrap apparatus don't be bouncing around and and electrocuting yourself remember kids electricity will kill you anyway you put this in here you turn on that light you see it and heat this up then you take your pallet knives and you come in here I wouldn't be heating these up now you can heat these up and, and here's the deal with hide glue when you heat it up it becomes pliable and you can actually take a hot knife on a hot plate or uh, a heat gun and heat it up and come around and do this don't try to pry this loose if you haven't heated it up because the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to hang somewhere you're going to develop a crack another crack I've got some cracks to fix here anyway you simply pry this up a little bit you take hot heat glue and then push the heat glue in there now the way heat glue works is you can take a suction cup once you've got this elevated notice I can raise this part up and adjust this to do anything I want once that's in place I take these spool clamps you see this they I've got wing nuts on here 
I can adjust these to do anything I want. And it's simply putting hide glue in there, taking a little suction cup, and pushing it in. All right, check this setup out. I can spin this any way I want, level this, put the neck lower, higher, whatever I want to do. Just level this out. I've got a sponge back here that allows me to put this under here. But I'm going to show you a couple of things here. So we're going to get these running opposite with each other. I have my tools there and I lock down this giant wing nut under here. So let's have a look at what we need to do here. Again, you can see right here that this is moving up and down. We don't want that. We also don't want this to be twisted this way or this way. It needs to come up straight. So when that's happening, you can tell one side wants to stick out more than the other. So what does that mean in terms of what's really going on? You can tell, where's Chick Flick Teal Pointer, that there is a crack right here. That crack is manifesting what's happening with the body as it twists this way. Now watch this crack when I pull out the sponge. It starts to open up. When I put this up like so, it will close back together. Now if I twist this one way or the other, and on the other end up here where things aren't tied and they're cattywampus, this is going to make this crack do whatever it's going to do. So, these cracks are a product of everything, the whole unit not working properly. So what are we going to do to fix this? Well, while our hide glue is heating up, I've shown you you can take some sash cord, link the sash cord, tie the two ends together. You're basically using it, making a choker like a crane. You can watch this move. See that? Like a choker. Um, I can put one of these up here like so. See that? I can flip this around now. Again, grabbing the bottom board. I've got another one of these little things. I can put it on the pin strap right here. I can take a motorcycle strap. I can hook the hook in here and do the other end and basically crank this up this way or pull tension any way I want. I can take another piece of sash cord like so that's a little bit longer. I can run it through here, run it up to the other end and basically tie this together and use the two pieces of sash cord to pull everything together. Like so. You can watch that move now. I just basically tie these together like that. And I can pull tension more or less, whatever I want. I can do the same thing across here. When it comes to these giant rubber bands, I'm talking about talking about having this in school. You could have launched whatever you wanted. But you basically just put these around here like this. Some people do binding jobs with these. But you can stretch these out and pull things together. You can also use, if you're trying to get things back to this way, you can use long bar clamps like this, but there's a number of ways to get this back here. Now, we all know that once I get this back together, I'm going to have to do some work on this back end with that crack and make sure that everything is okay. I don't really want to take the whole back off and deal with this. I want to deal with it in sections. Again, I'm going to talk about the binding. If there's binding on the guitar and you're pulling all the binding off, chances are something's going to come loose. Do not take the top and bottom binding off of a guitar at the same time. I guarantee you. Anyway, let's see if our hide glue is heat heating up. Yes, it is get the lid off of it. I use these resin acid brushes that plumbers use. They work out great and then with that little bit of water that's in there when you're done using your brush that hot water comes in handy when you're trying to clean off these brushes. Another good thing about these brushes you can adjust 
the length of the brush by just cutting it off like so and um, these things are the best keep them clean you don't want to be buying things over and over and wondering why you don't make money as a fake luthier okay guys I want to show you something really cool this is a tape dispenser I have three different tackiness from moderately tacky to really tacky like me and anyway you just pull this stuff off it's awesome for doing binding jobs. You can get to it and pull off a bunch of stuff. It really speeds up your work. This tape dispenser. And you can see that up here I have put this wherever. I'm going to have um, glue possibly running down. I've got my pallet knives here. So I can pop this open a little bit. I have not put the straps on yet. I'm going to actually let that pull down a little bit to get the glue in there. And then once I apply my glue, then I will pull this up and into place. And then I've got my clamp sitting here ready to go. And when you're prying this up, know where it stops. I've got a piece of tape running to the end of where it's stopped. I don't want to keep prying this up unless I heat it up. And again, I don't want to take the whole back off. So work sections at a time. It's okay. Pop this up enough to get the glue in there. And that's enough. You can even put glue on once you've got some on here by pressing it in here, pulling this out just a tad, and just pushing some glue in there. The kerfing is in there. It will catch the glue. Get plenty of glue. You don't want it globbing on but and falling out in chunks. But once the glue is in there, then we can put the clamps on and tighten everything up.
all right it is really just that simple four spool clamps we've got everything lined up where it's flush we're going to deal with the back of it it looks like there might be a little gap right here but we'll go around patiently and bring this back together remember it took time for this to happen and things to dry out and it's going to take time to put it back together but this is how these old instruments are saved use plenty of patience don't get in a hurry don't try, try to do too much at once now it's the exciting part of waiting for hide glue to dry all right there we go I hope you understand this it's not as bad as it looks um, we talked a little bit in other episodes about binding when you're redoing binding sometimes taking the binding off you find out that that's the only thing that was keeping the back on never pull the front and back binding off by the way did I give you a playlist about binding it's up there right there right about now remember all you do is hover over those eye those eyes up there take your mouse or your finger wait till the end of the episode and then you can start clicking on things and there's a really good episode or playlist about binding anyway when you're working on these things look at the back look at the front separately don't destabilize both of them but we're going to get to the spool clamps and the hide glue and we're going to fix this up and i'll keep you posted on what happens with this old 1950 silver tone by k hey as always thanks for watching give me a like and a subscribe and don't forget to check the resources section down below there's stuff in there that you have to have know or listen to thanks and i'll see you soon